Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good weekend. Labor Day weekend. It is September 7th. 3.30, market's going to close in half an hour. We're going to talk about GameStop, some technical analysis, some options. Talk about this little crypto flash crash that went on. Talk about the SPY, the overall market, and um, option plays and kind of what I'm, what I'm hyped for on GameStop and earnings. Um, also about Corsair, Rocket. Anyway, sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. Here's a crazy chart. We have a Twitter at Happy Money YT. You follow us on there as well as our Discord server. It's in the description. There's a link in there if you want. Um, but yeah, here's our nice dark mode. Got a Weeble, Weeble desktop dark mode. Kind of cool. Link for that in the description too if you don't have a brokerage you like. Um, Bitcoin, so the theory is that Bitcoin is being used by hedge funds to, uh, they've been parking capital there for a while. And basically when we start to see them getting squeezed, uh, they're dumping their crypto position because they need to, to fulfill margin requirements. So with that speculation, we're thinking crypto is going to dump when GME rips or with the market as well. Um, so today we had this like crazy flash crash on Bitcoin and it's kind of interesting so it was at like 50,000 this morning dropped all the way down to 43,000 just in a few minutes like 10 minutes I think uh, so 10 50 like 11 o'clock we get this big candle right at the same time they were able to short GME a lot interestingly enough and really brought GME down a lot and the market actually didn't come down like this at all this was just just GME and these basket of shorted stocks really I think I think a few of them had this same type of deal same looking pattern um but yeah so they the news was oh it's been a, or el salvador now change it to their currency bitcoin this and that um i'm not sure but i, I did see people were getting liquidated pretty heavily the margin that they allow you to have the leverage on crypto is crazy like crazy numbers so when you get <laughs> when you get margin called with a with crypto it can be very volatile because people are way over leveraged on it so Anyways, that uh, that's good. That's a good sign to me. Just that it's gonna be. Uh, it looks like they're starting to get, starting to get uh, liquidated or margin called, and starting to need to find their long assets to start to pull capital from. Um, if you look back on the chart here too, you can see when uh, when Jimmy rallied. Let's see, is it February is one time. February 20th yeah what do you know right here right when GME started rallying was this crash right here on Bitcoin literally the same time that's when this was ripping um, let's look up at this rally 524 have, have the same type of deal it was already in a downward trend a little bit, yeah. Look at these huge candles. Huge candles. So that was during this little rally right here. So they, they figured out different ways to do it. So it's maybe not always 100% Bitcoin. You know, they're using options and futures and swaps and ETFs and all sorts of stuff. But we have seen it some with uh, crypto just dumping when GME is rallying. So th this might be a sign that we are setting up for a rally um, still. Because we still also have... Uh, if this future swaps rollover period theory is correct, we have uh, another two days for that. I think it's the ninth. Yeah, it's Thursday, I believe that that is over. Just on the technical analysis side, this is actually still a very, very good looking chart. It's uh, still very bullish. We've got a bull flag still setting up. MACD is still bullish. RSI, it's really just calming down the RSI, ready for another rally. Um, if we break down through this support of 191, then my thesis might change and I'm assuming at that point the MACD will probably be bearish as well. Plus holding up above this range is good. It's been demoralizing the way they've done it because they had this bull flag and then they slowly had it melt up and then they've just been tanking it the last four days. So it's, it seems like it's not good, but if you zoom out and you're looking at it, it's, it's still good. On the hourly though, yeah, we've been bearish since 9-1, middle of the day, it's been on a bearish downtrend. But overall, this is still a a nice looking pattern nice chart there's no no signs of a reversal yet um just consolidation so 
this is the first time really we've had that even back here on this huge rally before earnings which was right here we were having rsi divergences signifying that it was going to re uh, return and uh, be bearish and have a reversal we haven't even had that yet um i'm i'm speculating actually that this earnings we will get news i don't know what news share split nft dividend um forward guidance just i think we're gonna get positive news this earnings i don't and i don't think it's gonna tank gme i think gme actually might rally and i think it might actually start the squeeze this earnings um and it's possible it won't start it the day of the hedgies might have one more day actually even on good news to tank the price and then they'll have that last final day where they have to do the rollover as well as the good news continuation where it's actually good news that institutional and big money comes into um to buy that's that ha actually happens pretty often companies have great news it'll tank and then the next day or or even a few days it'll start to just rally because the good news will actually kind of settle in and people will start to go long on it um unless if it is like shorts have to cover type news and people are smart enough to watch it and know wow this thing's gonna rip crazy then it might just rally immediately and that's possible too if it's a if it's a dividend or something that's probably going to be the case but i'm not going to get sad if it's good news on earnings and then it tanks because i think there could be a continuation a very soon continuation not like a three month later like this this like good if the earnings are just if they're like last earnings with basically no good guidance no new news and it tanks then yeah i'm gonna do covered calls I'm gonna get out of my long positions as far as options and just hold my shares and, and wait for this ride, this three month cycle to the next rollover period. If it's really good news, um, forward guidance, uh, whatever, and then it tanks, I'm gonna hold for a bit. I'm gonna wait and see, cause I think it might have a continuation off of that to go up um, if it doesn't rally right away. So with that being said, yeah, technical analysis looks good and i think we will have news of something good during earnings earnings calls tomorrow afternoon i'm going to be streaming it um probably start streaming right at market close at four i think it starts at five they're scheduling in um <clears throat> they're scheduling in an hour for it so with that it seems like it sh there should be announcing something because last earnings call was like 15 minutes pretty drab earnings call they're all not able to talk because of the sec investigation i think they all have to be quiet so hopefully Matt Furlong, the CEO, Brian Cohen, someone can share some something about what's going on. And that might be the beginning of the end, really, uh, this earnings. Very well could be. Um, SPY overall bearish on the hourly on all fronts. Um, I did open up a bearish call credit spread. We'll look at that. On the daily, it's still, still bullish, but it looks like it's kind of finding a top and wanting to kind of flatten out. So... This might have been the top top, um, but we'll see. Really have to drop below this nine moving average and this MACD to turn bearish in the daily for us to look like we're in a downward trend. But um, the Bitcoin thing was that was pretty big today. Um, Rocket also. So we had we have Rocket in our long term. This one had a short squeeze, same as uh, same as uh, GME's kind of sneeze. This one's heavily shorted. I mean, this chart is just basically computers. As you can see, just holding it down, pinning it down, not letting it go up. And then it shoots up when it's announced, announced a dividend. Um, we had options do like thousands of percent during this one. And uh, yeah, so I'm kind of expecting that same sort of thing. Maybe around when GME squeezes. Um, and just, just the fact that this thing's been just pinned down even lower now. Um, and they just had good earnings again. And uh, yeah, so I, I went long. I got some calls on it. And I already had some, but I got more. When it's so boring and flat like this, the volatile, the IV on the options just gets so cheap. I'd be losing money not to buy calls, is what I'm saying. So I got more calls. They're too cheap to pass up. It's a good discount. Um, just I'll hold them. And that's what I did back here when I had crazy, you know, we were up like 15, 20K on just a few, few options. Um, I made some money. I, I held too long. I wasn't expecting just a one day rally and then a dump. But I can't put it past them. They had shorting power and they shorted this thing back down into oblivion. So now it's down here. Even TA wise on the daily, it's bearish. Everything's bearish about it. Uh, what it does have though, is it's down on this uh, support line that it's respected many times right around, yeah, right around this area. 
So I think that's good. I think um, specifically today, actually, we saw this. We saw a couple spikes. So I saw this one. Tons of volume come in, rips up, just gets shut back down. Like, okay, that's peculiar. Sometimes that's kind of a little window into what's going to happen in the future as far as something's happening. If someone's buying in something, some pump is being primed potentially. So I actually bought calls right here on this dip. Some short term, some long term, we'll go over them. Uh, they're just so cheap. So I'm like, I'm going to load up on some calls. This might be a sign. Then boom, rallied right up here. Those calls are up 200%. The shorter term ones um i had an order to sell some make it free they didn't go through i'm gonna hold it because this thing's actually holding up now pretty well and i think this uh yeah on the hourly it's it's starting to turn bullish it's not quite there yet but uh i think that'll be good i'll show you those calls those are those are exciting it's it's fun buying calls when it's just low iv on a stock that you know can go crazy and rocket is that for me so same with corsair this thing almost a similar chart just pinned in this low range shorted good earnings come out it just gets shorted down more it kind of had the same little sneeze at one point didn't lock in enough profits on that they just shorted it back down we, it's actually been in this bullish trend now for a couple weeks so it's not the I, iv on this one isn't quite as low as rocket but uh it's still pretty low uh, especially if you're looking further out the money but it's in a nice upward trend so going along on this one is a much safer play i'd say as far as shares or options and uh i didn't get any new ones on there but corsair does look nice and it, it is having these weird pops too like look at this see this weird candle tons of volume i think something's about to happen with these happen so that's why i'm i'm keeping an eye on those that's why i'm mentioning it um typically i don't try and uh, anticipate the run i just work with momentum it's much safer you can be more consistent but um those two with options and you get you know i have like four months on one of them and different dates so I'm playing it safer as far as time, but they're they're still out of the money. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, GME, it's tough because it turned bearish back here and probably should have flipped out and turned bearish on my plays and then just waited for it to turn around. And then it comes today, I'm like, it's still bearish, but now it's like it's low enough that I am already missed most of the move. We've got an RSI divergence here, which is good for reversal. We've got this low and then this higher low. And then this low is lower than that low, so... It's diverging there, kind of still melting down though. But the fact that it's still above this kind of 191 and we're still still holding, let's see, where do I draw on this? Stay in drawing mode. The fact that we're still above this uh, kind of, this support um, is looking good. And even if we drop below that, if we stay above this FIB, this 191, uh, I think we're still in a nice, nice looking bull flag. So I think they're dumping it before earnings and I think earnings is gonna have great news and this thing's gonna rip. That's kind of my guess. So here are options. Um, so these Corsair ones, they're, see, I got these when they were cheap. So even if it's moving slowly up, they're still gaining value. These are up 235%, 65 calls, way out of the money. We've got until December, so 101 days. And then these ones I legged into. So same ones, and I sold some $70 calls. So if it really flattens out and these $70 calls I shorted, if these start to uh, lose value, then I could buy them back if I wanted to for cheaper than I sold them and just kind of do that, do that little covered call deal. Um, so here's my SPY call credit spread. Like I gotta do credit spreads, quit, quit buying premium on SPY. So this is the way for me. I just let them expire worthless and collect my Cheddar. Um, Confluent, great stock. I paid kind of a premium on this thing, but Confluent's been ripping. Only 10 days left on that, but the chart looks beautiful. Recent IPO, um, that one's looking good. Here, So here's the Rocket ones I already had. So these ones that are really worthless. I already had these. He's way out of the money now. And then today I picked up these 22 calls for 38 day expiration. And then these uh, 1889 calls that have 10 days left. These are up 57. They were up like 300% earlier at their peak. Um, I had this order for 23 cents. Shows you the difference. So now it's trading at 11 cents a contract. I had them for 23 cents. It wasn't that high. I think the highest it got was like 18 cents. But um Anyways, the, these will probably, uh, these, these are shorter dated. So I do need to get out of these. I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to rip in the next few days on Rocket. Um, MVST is rallying. We have this credit spread on it, but it's pretty aggressive. Not sure how that's going to go. Uh, but the account today, and we're down quite a bit. Down 7,100 on this account just because of uh, GME. You know, GME is the big one in here. So that's kind of what you get. And GameStop on their news, on their investor relations. I was trying to find it where, where it even is. 
On their like investor relations portion of their website, they're updating it with all this. They've updated a lot actually. And uh, I think it's in kind of conjunction with them probably coming out with news with their earnings coming up. Let's see, GameStop, Game Informer. So like separating some of it, I'm trying to find it here. And then they put up like on the banners, on the actual website, they have like game, um, like game graphics. And on the SEC one, they have uh, Crash Bandicoot. There's all sorts of stuff you can read into it. But yeah, it's like the Crash one on SEC. And then it's the MOASS. Oops, MOASS, that game, whichever that one was on the Twitter. Or uh, I think Ryan Cohen's page or something. It's crazy. It's crazy. You can read into it however you want. I think it's awesome. Um, it, if it is intentional, which it kind of seems like it is. Just, whoa, spy. Okay, 10 minutes. Yep, 10 minutes. Here we go um so yeah that's kind of kind of interesting if uh it is intentional it definitely seems like it is just because of uh yeah i mean it, it was purposeful the tweets they made and the comments those those weren't those weren't fake so anyways um let's see rocket corsair the spy crypto gamestop yeah i mean gamestop's down today they they used um they had had shares on iBorrow and then they used them and then they're back so i don't know but to me on the hourly it is still bearish i think we're coming down to support though so there's not gonna be much room for much more downward downward uh trajectory um on the daily it is still bullish uh but the, yeah i mean it's still bullish on the macd it's still bullish as far as this looking like a bull flag today will be uh red under the nine moving average which is one bearish indicator but uh, I'm not going to hold too much weight with that just because we still have this bull flag and this bullish MACD. So these are lagging indicators though, so you kind of have to consider that. I think probably tomorrow they will drop it um, some more and we'll see where it bounces. Maybe this 191 FIB, maybe maybe even down lower. I'm not sure. Maybe this 181. Um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see and then come tomorrow after, come, come join us on the stream, you know, for market close i'm gonna stream the, the earnings call and if there's news after hours is gonna be insane on gme and into uh will that be thursday so really tomorrow will be your last day if you want to go long if you think that there's going to be good news and because it it could gap up a lot or gap down a lot after earnings typically it does so we will see i'm stoked thanks you guys for watching i really appreciate it we'll see you tomorrow Peace out.